the life of that labor certification. But if you have two labor certifications going, in the event, God forbid, you have a problem with that first labor certification, you have another one going that you can fall back very on. Very good point, very good point. Look, let me ask you a question. If somebody, one employer has filed an, uh, a labor cert and in EB3, and he got a second employer, he got a choice, let us say, he can request the same as his own employer to do also an EB2, or he has also somebody that he knows that's willing to give him a job offer and do an EB2. What would you prefer between the two? A new employer with a new job offer? A new employer with a I new job so. offer. Absolutely. So. Absolutely positively. Yeah. And many, uh, many situations present themselves where an individual has a skill set where they can go out and obtain prospective multiple jobs. And uh, especially in the technology field, there are very specific skill sets okay. that companies are after where they can have multiple job offers from multiple employers. So this is not something that's necessarily far-fetched. It really has to do with a race to see who's going to get the labor certification for that individual first to be able to hire them on their green card to be able to go forward. Very good so, advice. Very good yeah. advice. Thank you so much. And the next thing, which is also very interesting and segues very well with this area, Michael, which I think we should discuss, is pre-certification. Because obviously the labor certification presents certain opportunities for individuals that what they do is they can go to the U.S. Department of Labor and show that there are no U.S. workers who can take the job. But what about the possibility of avoiding the labor certification process altogether and obtaining pre-certification? See, the two jobs that have come to my mind, nurses and physical therapists. Correct. They already are on a Schedule A, what we call it, and you do not need a labor certification because the Department of Labor has already certified. They are listed on Schedule A sure. Group 1. Right. But then there are other categories in which you can f file I-140 petition without a labor certification, which could be uh, EB-1 category, you can explain about that or uh, EB2 with uh, uh, national interest. Right, well, one of, the, one of the areas that we're using quite frequently, especially now because it seems to have been uh, recently, it got a lot of press, is the national interest waiver. And the reason why is the national interest waiver is seen by um, Alex Mayorkas, uh, who a couple of weeks ago, along with Janet Napolitano, were uh, promulgating uh, benefits for entrepreneurs and investors. And they said that one of the prongs of the old case that interpreted the National Interest Waiver Classification, which was Mississippi Phosphate, said that obviously doing things that are economically helpful to the U.S. economy and building infrastructure in U.S. jobs is something that is in the nation's interest. So what the government has done is seen this as a way to uh, possibly open the door to U.S. And uh, to foreign investors. And there's some creation of, of uh, employment also in this? Creation of, US, creation of jobs by the foreign national for U.S. workers. Correct. And that's, uh, that's what they're hoping to develop. We're talking also about the EB-1 category, like a person who qualifies for an L-1 or already has an L-1 can apply for green card under the EB-1 Right, category. absolutely. That's Just a pre, pre-certified pre classification too, Michael. An individual who entered the United States as an L-1 and has passed over, a lot of these people enter as L-1s for new companies, so they have to pass over the extension period, and then they're allowed to apply for the E-1 classification as a multinational executive. The legal standard for obtaining L-1A and E-1-3 is exactly the same. So what it is is that um, if an individual is coming to work for a qualified organization uh, and they've worked abroad for one year within the last three years and is coming to the U.S. organization to work as an executive manager, then they can obtain a green card that way. And, and that's a great classification. A businessman who has a lot of money has two options. He can do either an L-1, start a company here, and do an L-1 and then go to the green card process. Correct. Or he can do the EB-5 investment of a million or half a million That's dollars. right. And Michael and I, uh, you know, Michael, you and I always discuss this yes, as yes. which is going to be better. And obviously, um, I have certain feelings. I was, uh, before I was an immigration lawyer, I was a securities lawyer. And uh, I know the pitfalls of securities law exactly. and the dangers of that area. And I never really had a lot of security with the EB-5 area. And I always tried, uh, when I could, 
to tell clients that maybe it's not a bad idea to think about opening up your own business here in the United States, which is affiliated with your foreign business. But obviously, they have to have a foreign business. I would say that uh, in all these situations, it's a every good idea to different. Stay, sit with yeah. a lawyer, go through all your uh, exactly. position and everything else that you put before on the table. And then a good lawyer can give you different ways, A, B, C, D options to see. Exactly. Most important thing is to lay out the options and let the individuals choose which option they feel is the best option that they want to pursue. Well, I think um, we are now running out of time. And we thank you very much for watching the program. Mr. Nachman, thank you very much on coming to the program. Please keep thank watching you, us every Saturday at 1 p.m. only on TV Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you.